speed. Live it. Hey, what's up? It's your girl Vita Guerra, living the low life. In the low life, Vita sees what it takes to dress up cars that demand the most cool and rare accessories on the road today. You gotta respect someone that puts that much time and effort into a car like this. That's what makes the cars accessories. It's just like a woman, you know, she has to get her hair and her nails done. So here's the deal. Without the right accessories, it just isn't a low rider. Why? Because they don't mean a thing if you ain't got that bling. Low riders come in many shapes and sizes. There's cruisers that are low and slow, there's hoppers, and we can't forget radical hoppers. There are old bombs and rides right out of the showroom. There's primered works in progress and perfect works of art on display in a museum. But no matter what you're driving, you have got to accessorize that lowrider. The list can't be too long. Every little accessory that's possibly out there for that car we're gonna snag it up and we're gonna floss it. What we call, we call, you know, dressing up our cars, you know what I mean? Some of the chrome pieces, things like that, you know, you, you, you kind of go like on a holy grail search sometimes, man, for, for a little chrome strip. When you get it, you're happy as hell. Nobody can understand why you're so happy over a piece of chrome, you know? Accessories add style. If you're building a tuner, then you hang around with people that build tuners and everything kind of stays the same. If you're hanging around with rod guys, you know, you kind of stay the same with, with your styles and that. And low riders are no different. Some see it as a trip to the beauty parlor. She's like a woman, you know, she has to get her hair and her nails done, so, you know, you gotta get shoes and, and the right tires or the right rims, the right, I mean, the right size, make sure they're tucking right. The interior, I mean, make sure if there's things that need to be painted, you gotta get those painted. So there's, there's a lot to do with accessories. If you spend that much money into a vehicle, you gotta go out there and show everybody so they can either see what you're doing, keep the movement alive, and function. This concept holds true, especially if you're a bomber. For the most part, you know, you want that visor on it, that front visor to give it that that low look, you know, like almost like, you know, like you're mad dogging. You know, you're driving down the street and you got that visor all low. You got the skirts on it, it makes the car look lower. I mean, I can't even explain the feeling that you have when you drive behind a car like that. I mean, you feel like all eyes on you. You got the oldest plane in the background. You know, got everybody giving you thumbs up. It was like, damn, check them out. You got to respect someone that puts that much time and effort into a car like this. So some of it's their heritage they like to put in there, and some of it is just purely show. You know, back in in the 80s, when guys were doing motorcycles in the Bay Area, where I come from in Northern California, they started doing gold plating on on the engine pieces and engraving. That was real popular. Now, if you saw one today, it's it's obsolete and, and it's you know it's old style, and everybody laughs at it. But it's just a style, you know. The styles come and styles go. Basically, there's one simple rule. The more accessories, the better. It's, you know, you just, you just go through the checklist and say, I got this, I got that. It's nice to be different and have a little bit more than the other guy, and that's why they add accessories. Lowrider accessories are like money. Can you really have too much? I don't think so. Let's see where some great accessories can be found. Fargo Automotive is a classic car auto dealership. 
And here at Fargo, Mike Ramos is the go-to guy when the pursuit is a rare accessory and you know you want it. So we hear you're like the king of accessories. Uh, I've been around for a while. Yeah, but I hear you find original pieces in their boxes and... I travel all over the world. Uh, vintage swamp meets uh, nationwide, locally, Pomona. There with a the flashlight in the morning looking for goodies and stuff on the internet. And a lot of times, pretty much, uh, you'd be surprised in backyards as you're driving around. You just see it, have money in your pocket. So see in somebody's backyard, you might find a treasure. Yeah, you just never know. When you're building a car, you want the original piece versus the reproduction. In some cases, you have to take the reproduction. This is a 42 fleet line, unrestored, 52,000 miles. It's the first year of the fleet line two-door, and it's accessorized, fog lights, flying ladyhood ornament. It's got the wing tips, uh, your manufacturer plates, and the original Felix the Cat. And this is a fender guide, which is known as a, kind of like a curb filler. It's got the peck advisor, the peck. And the A, I know what that means. What's that mean? That means that only on the day that A gas was getting out, on certain days, right? The A's and the B's. Ah, you did you your homework. Gas. Yeah. Good girl. Wow, this this interior looks really pretty. Unrestored. Unrestored. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's got the wood grain dash. It's got all the accessories. This is one of the most uh, accessorized from the factory. I believe 52 accessories from the factory. Tons of stuff. A lot of cigarette stuff. Cigarette was a thing back then. Everybody smoked. So there's cigarette dispensers that automatically roll the cigarette out for you. There's dispensers that hold the cigarette for you. It's got the compass, it's got the pipe holder, the tissue box. These handles for Chevrolet were plastic because of the war year. They only produced this car for a short time. And the war came, so from 42 to 46, there was no cars made. All they were making was tanks and what have you. Gear shift holder for the coins. See the coins on the end of the gear shift right there? Oh, okay. For the toll roads. It's got the hat holder above you. And it's even got a shaver in the box right there, in the GM box, if I wanted to shave. Traffic viewer, or when you have this visor, you can't see the street lights. See a little prism? This thing? Right. The oh. lights is suspended usually up. Oh, and so you it can see it. It magnifies, you can see when the light changes. There you this go. This is making me sad. Yeah. Fire extinguisher, and then, of course, lace it. I love this. That means we're going on a trip somewhere. It's this got... is too small for me, though. I oh, need geez. a bigger bag. The classic rides here at Mike's aren't just cool, they're also time capsules. And as it is with perfectly preserved lowrider bombs, they're filled with knowledge. They remind us that cars reflect a society and that history is important. And then you see the stars. This is plastic from the war. It's got 48 stars on this flag. These are known as license toppers. 48 stars? Right, before... Uh, before... Uh, come on, come on. What, Hawaii or Puerto Rico? No, no, no. Let's get to the phone. <laughs> Mike has more to show us later, but now we're meeting a guy who can personalize your lowrider. Meet Hernan Daloya, one highly sought after engraver. Lowriding is uh, it's not a sport, it's a lifestyle. And in that lifestyle, you'll find many beautifully engraved car parts. Custom engraving comes from the art of uh, gun engraving, knife engraving, sword engraving. Uh, as far as lowriders are concerned, the artwork has gone from very little engraving on vehicles to nowadays where you have a lot of engraving on cars. Hernan is famous in the lowriding community, and it's easy to see why. He can make any piece of metal into a work of art. Today we're gonna be working on a pressure plate. Pressure plates are what go on the back of the hydraulics. We're gonna start doing an outline car. This is done with a little air chisel. Uh, so many hits per minute with a foot pedal. As you can see, you get one chance to get it right. And now that is the outline on the aluminum pressure plate. We're headed back to see the king of lowrider accessories. At Fargo Automotive, Mike presents Accessory Heaven. Aero related, OG original. OG. And NOS new in the box. The record players, 45 players, 
We got Oh my god. Yeah. Well, these are real desirable. RCAs are the most desirable. They're a little harder to find. Uh, I didn't even know you could put this in the car. So this is like That's kind of like the early CD, CD single yeah. slot back in its day. This is the color bars in the box. Good luck trying to find them. In these, the box. These ones. Wow. Yeah. I guess you would say in the 70s up, you know, the color bars are very desirable. Reverbs, color bars. Uh, true spokes, true rays. If you're into the 70s, you want original Astro Supremes. Um, those are the rabbit ears. Here's the TV box that came in with the Sony TV that plugs into the car. Oh! This is a little People anti People actually had this luxury. This is a very desirable item. This is the Compass 58 to 64. So you know where you're going. Clinic. Those there are the go. tissue boxes. Mm -hmm. Hard to find because they're always cracked and all chicharro on the. Chicharro means overcut. <laughs> it's got the fender guides. This is a fender guide, very sawed off accessory for 39. See, it's got the GM on it. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's one thing about yeah. these old cars. Here's... They made sure you knew what kind of car you were driving. Right. It's all from another era. And remember, don't throw out those boxes. It triples the value if you have the box for it. You know, it's just, it's, it's nice to have something. Wow, nobody's ever messed with it. You know, it's virgin, basically. Aero-related accessories, Chasey Whitney, Pep Boys, Western Auto, uh, original Breezies, snack trays for the kids eating their driving burgers. This item is a, it's called a Mar steering wheel clock, which self-winds. This particular one has got the Chevrolet logo on it, which is super hard to find. And it goes on the steering wheel. What's this? Those are called battery fail saves. And what? Instead of putting water in your battery, you fill these with water and it gravity feeds down so there's always water in your battery. It's a little accessory that went on top of the battery. It's right here. I didn't know you put water in your battery. Yeah. Super rare power steering script that goes in the trunk. <laughs> I didn't see this before. Swap cooler, AKA or Air cooler, that's the most desirable. That's the bullet cooler. Firestone made them, Thermador made them. That hangs outside of the window. So you put water, water ice, in there and ice. And there's a wheel, tumbles and blows fresh air into the inside of the automobile. So this was that's air conditioner air back conditioner in the day. Back in the day, yeah. What the heck is this? Hit the yellow button. Is this all the accessories, or is there a lot more and you just there's, didn't have room? No, there's a lot more. Reproduction's okay, but then there's the purists that gotta have that diamond, you know, versus the repo zirconia. These are the zirconias. Why are you gonna, you know, you women see, love diamonds. You wanna see some diamonds? Let's go. Let's go. Back at Hernan's, he engraves as he tells us how all this began. I myself got into low writing. Um, I'm buying the magazines at 12 years old. It just astonished me how a car could go up and down and just the noise that, you know, it just, to me, was beautiful. And as it's been with more than a few artists in the world of low riding, it started out with wheels that were thinner, lighter, and fewer in number. Back in 94, 95, I built a lowrider bike called Argentinian Pride, being that I am from Argentina. And I got into the art of engraving. Then afterwards, I did a car, uh, a bomb called Pura Vida, which was the lowrider bomb of the year in 02. The tricky thing to do in the engraving is also, you gotta remember, once you carve, there's no going back. So if you mess up, it's all new part. Hernan's a passionate artist. You gotta love what you do. I love the cars, the work that everybody puts into it, the craftsmanship, and just family and friends. That's what it's all about. At Fargo Automotive, it's all about the rare lowrider accessories. Here's the diamonds, Vita. Okay, diamonds. This, is... this case is pretty much dedicated to 48, 42 to 48 Chevrolet. Uh, anywhere from, as you can see, pretty much everything's new in the box mm -hmm. or in pretty, pretty damn good shape. Electric shaver unit. In the box. Little thermometer, like in the 42, there in the box. 
You got uh, GM compasses there versus the aftermarket compasses that we've seen in the other table. Remote control radio, like the one on the previous car, that changed that amounts to the steering column. This. And it'll turn the little knob and it'll scan the radio stations from left to right. That's a big radio. Yes, very heavy. And again, it's transistorized, so you gotta let it warm up before it goes. The search is constant. So how long does it take you to get all this stuff? Because I know that's like... It never ends. It never it's, ends. There's always a demand. Somebody's, You're always working. Somebody asks for something, you gotta find it. Thanks, Mike. It's been an accessorizing experience. Now back at Hernan's, our pressure plate is making the rounds. When we're actually engraving this, you're gonna see that I'm obviously moving my vise around, which is an engraving vise, especially made for this. By spinning the vise along with moving your hand slightly, you're actually giving the shape of the letter. Hernan's great work is on display at a museum. He truly outdid himself on the award-winning Orgullo Mexicano. I see a lot of engraving, so tell me a little bit more about the engravings in the car. This car is engraved, like it's one of the most engraving cars that you can see in, in the whole competition from, from Lowrider. Underneath the transmission engine, you can see engraving from the front of the car all the way to the back. On Orgullo Mexicano, we did all Aztec engraving when I met uh, Alejandro, aka Chino. Um, he told me, I don't want no scroll work. So I said, all right, well, it's the name of the car. Okay, Orgullo Mexicano, which means Mexican pride. Um, we decided to go with all Aztec images. It looks really nice. I mean, I see why you guys win. <laughs> Engraving at this level takes quite a few steps. So now that we have all the lettering done, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing scroll work around the sides here. After the scrolls, he adds a galaxy of dots. One dot at a time is usually what we do this, one by one. So there's 100,000 dots, 100,000 times that the hand hits the metal. To me, a lowrider is formed with detail. The suspension is unique, the engines are unique, the hydraulic systems are unique. Uh, a lot of money and time and effort and passion to put into these vehicles. I always have a saying, I'm not the best, I'm not the worst. I just try my best. There's a finished product. Now it's ready for chrome and gold and black nickel. Lowrider accessories say a lot about your car and they say a lot about you. It's to what that person's into, you know what I mean? You'll get that one guy that you know just wants to go all out on his car, you know, and that's fine. At Jagster Engineering, Joel Garcia makes some heavy names. We make car club plaques, basically for all the basically all through the country and for the world. Uh, the lowrider car club plaque, lowrider the pendants, emblems for the knockoffs, keychains. The plaque is basically the heart of the lowrider. Uh, it represents. Uh, where you're from, who, who you hang out with, your club, and basically a car without, without a, a, a plaque is basically just another car. It's just amazing how, how we have technology nowadays. We have like state-of-the-art stuff that we produce, uh, you know, stuff for airplanes, machine shops and stuff, but we still continue to make these plaques. Today, new tools shape this art. Before, they used to make the patterns and for the molds, for the plaques. But I guess that people are getting, getting away from that using laser cut. It's a highly personal process. The customer gives me a design. If they have a des design or not, if not, I send them patterns. I have a, I have a page, pages full of plaques. They could pick and choose different lettering, different banner types. Um, other than that, you know, if you can draw, we can make it. A lot of guys, they like the, the, the old English, old English writing all through the country, all through the world. Once he agrees and is happy with the design that we created for him, what we do is that we scan it, and then we, we, we have to make it into a wireframe. And after the wireframe, they're into a series of codes. From this process, I gotta shoot it over to uh, another processor to create the G codes and M codes, machine language, which the machine is able to generate and cut it. Now, all I gotta do is just transfer it over to the machine, press the button, and it'll cut. Now, the laser is on its own, creating our low-life masterpiece.
It's technology serving up identity. Just got to send out to get Chrome, and here's a plaque for your lowrider, Vita. Thanks, Joe. And remember, lowriders got to have options and ornaments. See you next time. Peace. Ooh, a fan. Pull yourself down. Let me see what I got going on over here. <laughs> you snuff it out from here, and it holds it as you're driving. And when you're done, flick the ashes in. Out this and way. it goes outside. The other side of the window. Yeah. Literally, which yeah, wasn't a big deal back then. Ashes in the eye is not cool. Yeah.